Hello, it's Kelly Marie Alvarez here from Lawn Fawn with a video for scrapbook.com in celebration of their 12 days of Christmas event. And I am so excited to be creating this really cool shadow box card that actually fits in an envelope today in the video. So let's go ahead and get crafting. We are going to be working with the shadow box card die today and then the shadow box card mountain add-on as well. We're also going to be using a couple of stamp sets. So here we have the Mice on Ice stamp set, which is one of my favorite holiday sets ever. It's so cute. And we're also going to be using this adorable little Christmas tree from this Yeti or Not stamp set that I just love too. I'm using these 8x10 magnetic start sheets and I keep all of my shadow box card stuff together. So there are a bunch of different add-ons for this set, a theater add-on, an ocean add-on, and the mountain add-on we're going to be using today. We're also going to be using the Snow Day Remix paper pie, which is so cute and I love this red paper with the snowflakes on it. So we're going to be die cutting the shadow box card die from that piece. Then we're going to take that mountain add-on window and you can see how cute that is with the trees. It reminds me of a little snow globe and we're going to center that right onto the bigger part of the shadow box. So now we're going to have one piece with an opening and then we're going to have one piece without an opening and we're going to be using both of these to form the shadow box. The mountain shadow box add-on also has these cute little trees so I've cut those out of some white cardstock and we're going to attach those on to the front of the shadow box. You can see those are little tree shapes and we're just going to layer these white trees on top. I love the idea that these trees are completely covered in snow. Now that we've done some of the preliminary decorating on the shadow box card pieces we're going to put those aside and start to do some stamping with the mice on ice stamp set. We're going to use a misty tool so that we can stamp a bunch of these images all at once. So we've got four little mice there and then that Christmas tree from the Yeti or Not stamp set. We're going to pick those up with the door of the misty and we're going to ink them up with some jet black ink. And jet black ink is really great because it's Copic marker friendly and it's watercolor friendly too. But today we're going to be using some Copic marker. The other reason that I love using the misty is you can see there I didn't stamp that tree very well. I kind of missed pressing down on part of it so I was able to stamp it again and now it looks perfect. Next, I'm going to take out my stamp chamois case here, which has been keeping my stamp chamois from drying out. It's nice and damp still, so I can clean off my stamps and put those away so that I can start to do all of that fun coloring. Once I've cleaned off the stamps, I'm going to put it right back in the box to keep it nice and damp on my desk so that I can use it later on this card. Here we're using Copic markers to add some color to these images and I love coloring these mice in different shades of brown or gray. In this case we're going to use the E50 markers which are some of my favorite for the mice. Now that darkest marker, the E55, I only bring it in at the very end just in the little creases there around the ear, under the arm, and under the scarf and then I'm just blending those out and by adding that little bit of that darkness it really gives the mouse a three-dimensional look. As you can see, I always like to lay down my lightest marker first and then I go from my dark to medium to light. The reason I lay down that lightest marker first is I like to wet the paper so that it's a little bit easier to blend these markers together. So light, dark, medium, and then all the way out to light. And you can see how cute it is and it's nice and quick too. I'm going to add some light pink to the inside of their ears and also give them some cute little rosy cheeks and a little pink in their noses. And then a warm gray for the belly, blended out with a really light warm gray, so it's just a little touch of shadow. Now for each of the different scarves, we're going to color them in four different colors. And you'll see there that I stamped out one more mouse because I decided I wanted the mouse that had the scarf too, so I wanted all four to have a scarf, so I switched out the mouse I was using. Now to keep everything coordinating, for the Christmas tree I'm using the same greens as the scarf and then the ornaments are the same greens as the other three scarves. My markers were already out so I made it super easy and I love that it gives it this really nice cohesive feel. So if you've already used some markers, leave them out on your desk and then you can use them for different elements for different things in your cards. Next up, we're going to use the coordinating dies. We're going to line those up with the stamped images, hold it in place with some low tack tape. I like to use post-it note tape personally. And then we're going to run it through the die cut machine and have perfectly cut out images that we're going to be able to put inside of our shadow box. 
the Mice on Ice stamp set has these beautiful large words in it, and one of them is joyful, and it's so pretty. So we're going to stamp that out in some Noble Fur ink, which is a nice dark green. And I love that this has a coordinating die to go along with it. It's so pretty. You can have this look like the mouse have ice skated out the word joyful, or you can use it as a large scale sentiment on your cards. So there's that coordinating die. We're going to line that up with the image, hold it in place, and run it through the die cut machine. You can see this beautiful, delicate, just bold, gorgeous sentiment. I absolutely love it. To add a little more interest to these characters, we're going to take a white gel pen and just add some cute little details. And today I am recreating a card by Tammy from the design team. So thank you so much, Tammy, for letting me recreate this adorable card in the video. And I went ahead and was inspired by her white gel pen marks to add white gel pen marks to the scarves and different little areas on my mice. And I just think it looks absolutely adorable. Makes them look 3D and really cartoony. Now it's time to start forming the shadow box. So we're going to take out those two pieces that we were working on at the beginning of the video. And the die has created some score lines for us. So there's a score line kind of in the middle and then the score line at the very end. And that's going to give us our cool little tab at the end. So we're going to score in the middle and then we're going to score down here at the end. And we're going to do that on both of these pieces. So in the middle and then at the end. Then we're going to take some nice strong eighth inch double sided tape and we're going to put that on the two tabs that we just created. So we're going to run that on each of the pieces, the solid one and the one with the opening too. The next thing we need to do is attach these two pieces together. So we're going to flip them over just like this and we're going to line them up and I like to kind of butt them up right against each other because we're going to form one long piece. So we're going to peel up that liner paper, butt them up against each other and then you can just press down that flap attaching the two pieces. I wanted it to look like it was snowing on the inside of the shadow box. So we're going to take this really cool paper from the Snow Day Remix 6x6 pad and we're going to line the whole inside. So I've gone ahead and trimmed a piece to fit the back and now I need to trim some pieces to fit the sides. And this paper is so pretty, it's my favorite. So I'm going to take out my ruler here and just do a quick measurement there. It's about two and an eighth by two and three quarters. And then we'll go ahead and trim down some pieces for the sides too. And by adding some of the paper, not just to the back, but to the sides, it really gives that 3D snow globe effect. So we'll add some tape runner to those and then we're going to layer those right inside the box. Now we've got to add some inserts into this box. So we're going to be using the mountain insert from the mountain add-on that we've been working with. And we're going to be using the hills that come in the original shadow box. So I love mixing and matching different elements from different shadow box add-ons. So I've gone ahead and die cut those out of some white cardstock. And then the little snow caps we've die cut out of some pixie dust cardstock, which is a really pretty white sparkly cardstock. We're going to use the glue tube to add some glue to the back of each of these snow caps and layer them onto the mountains. And there's something about the white mountains with the white glitter on top that I think is just so pretty. Now for the front of the box, we want to decorate that too. So we're going to take one of these and just trim off those little tabs that help you add it on the inside of the box. And we're also going to trim down some of the height too, because we don't want it to be too tall. I still want to see those cute little Christmas trees on the front. And here you can see it's going to give this kind of snowy effect to the very front of the box. We'll go ahead and fold the tabs on our other hill pieces. So you see these, these tiny little tabs, the score lines are created by the die. We're just going to fold those back on our two hill pieces. And then when it comes to the mountains, we're also going to trim off the tabs because we're going to attach the mountains to that very back panel. So you'll see how we're going to do that in just a little bit. So we're just going to trim off those tabs and now it's going to be a great decorative element for the very back. Our first step is to add our snowy hill to the front. So we're going to take that strong eighth inch double sided tape, just run it along the bottom of the shadow box and we'll be able to add our white hill there. And you can see that it would look cute with and without that hill, but I think that hill looks really nice because it gives a cool 3D to have the other hills behind it. So to create the hills behind it, we're going to work with those ones that we fold the tabs on. We're going to use that same strong eighth inch double sided tape again and we're going to add that to each of the tabs on each of our hillsides. Then we're going to peel up the liner paper on one side and we're going to attach it into the box. We're going to be attaching it right close to the window but on that short side. So you'll see we're going to attach it right in there. So I'm just going to kind of fold it back and I like to use the window as a guide as to how high I'm going to place this hill and how far back. So you can see I'm kind of picking it up, looking through that window to see what's going to look nice. Once I find that right placement, I'm just going to stick that right side down into the box.
Then we're gonna repeat the same thing with the next hill. And we're gonna create almost like stadium seating here. So we're gonna raise that hill up even higher to really make it look nice and dynamic, like there's just snowy hills going all the way up to the mountains. And you can see how pretty that's looking. Then the last step is to take our snow-capped mountains. We're gonna add some tape runner to this because this is gonna to attach to the very back of the box. This is also gonna help form that 3D effect. We have something in the very back, something in the very front, and then two hills in the middle. To finish forming our box, we're gonna take our hills and fold them completely flat against the back of the box. Then we're gonna peel up the liner paper on those other tabs on the left-hand side, and we're gonna take the left-hand side of the box and close it almost like a book, and we're gonna pick up that adhesive on those hills. Then we're gonna peel up the liner paper on the tab of the outside of the box, and then we're gonna fold the right side over and push down, and you'll see as we pop it open, we formed the box, which is amazing. And because we formed the box when it's flat, it's always gonna fold nice and flat and fit perfectly in your envelope. Now it's time to add those cute little mice on ice into the shadow box. So we're gonna be adding them on all of the different layers. So we've added our turquoise guy on that kind of first inside layer. We've got our pink scarf on the very outside. And then we're gonna be working with the other two and the Christmas tree in the back. And you can see as we layer those mice in, the 3D effect of the card becomes even more awesome. So we'll put the Christmas tree behind them and they're gonna be holding hands as they ice skate, which is so super cute. I was deciding on some different things for the back of the card and I almost used this cute little cabin that's in the shadow box card mountain add-on, but I really wanted those cool glittery mountains to stand out. So instead I just added a little Christmas tree, but at the very end of the video, I'm gonna show you another version that's got that cabinet so you guys can see that. Now we're gonna be doing some white heat embossing. So I went ahead and used an anti-static tool across the paper to prep it. We're gonna stamp with some clear embossing ink right onto that black licorice cardstock. I like to lightly tap there so I don't press down too hard so I have a nice clear image with that sticky ink. We're gonna add some white heat embossing powder to that and then we can heat it up with our heat tool and we're gonna have a nice bright white shiny sentiment on the black cardstock which is really striking. Next, I'm taking out a sentiment banner and we're gonna line that up with the wishes. So the left-hand side is gonna line up right with the word wishes. We'll run it through the die cut machine. Now we're gonna die cut it again to create a custom size banner. So we're gonna line up the right side of that banner at the very end of the word wishes. We can hold it in place with some low tack tape, run it through the die cut machine and it's gonna get us a custom length of this banner. And I just love how this tiny cute little banner looks. So we're gonna take that guy and we're gonna add some tape runner to the back and attach it to the front of the box. Then we're gonna use our words joyful and the joyful words are actually gonna peek up off the top of the box, but it's still gonna fit in a standard size envelope. So don't worry about that part. So we're gonna add some liquid glue just to the very ends of the words joyful and we're gonna kind of put it at an angle so that it goes right on top of the word wishes. And I think that just looks so cute. And now our card is all done. I love the mice. I love those snow-capped mountains in the background and that really cool kind of snow globe effect on the front of it. When you look on all sides, you see that beautiful paper from the snow day. And then when you push it down, it folds completely flat and it fits in a standard envelope. So you could easily put this in the mail with standard postage as well. So we're just gonna drop that in the envelope. You could close that up write your address on the front, put it in the mail, and you're gonna surprise someone around the holidays with the coolest, not only 3D card, but it becomes a cool little decoration they can put on their mantle. So it's got that awesome 3D effect, and then to write my message, I always like to flip the card over, and I write it right on the back right there. I absolutely adore creating these really cool shadow box cards. They have such an amazing effect, and I think it would just make someone's day to open up that envelope and have that whole card just pop up and just make them smile. I also wanted to show you guys this amazing card by Tammy. This is the one that inspired me to make mine today, and she put that cute little cabin in the back instead, so you can really mix and match the different elements from the shadow box card mountain add-on to get a bunch of really cool looks.